ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد الحمد لله على نعمه الاسلام والسنه after praising Allah and singing the salat and salam upon the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we continue going over the tremendous letter in which imam ibn qayyim he wrote to one of his brothers and we continue in our reading of the in our reflection our reading and reflection of the explanation of this tremendous letter by the fadil to shaykh shaykh sulaiman ar-ruhayli hafizahullah ta'ala where we reach his statement and commenting on the opening lines that have in its gentleness and show concern and care for the recipients of the letter the the sheikh he mentions he says wal asl ar rifq fi an nasiha mutlaqa that the default in advice is gentleness that gentleness is the default when given advice across the board ma'am that generally and typically this is the case is that is going to be gentle when an individual is given advice illa except so there are exceptions but the default is that is gentle that's the default the exception comes as the sheikh mentions he says illa li muqtadin yaqtadi at ta'nif he said except when there is something that requires and necessitates or except in the case where there is necessitated harshness so typically the advice it comes across and generally the default is that it is with gentleness but there are times where you have to be harsh you have to use harshness now there are times where you have to use harshness now i wanted to stop here because listen if you hear one of the, the ulama they mention an alim from the ulama sheikh from the mashayikh and they mention that the default of advice is gentleness i don't want you to have the understanding that they believe that harshness is never to be applied when giving advice it's not what they said they're speaking about the default and it's important that we learn to keep things where they are if an individual is speaking about the default then he is not commenting on the exception he's talking about the default right now right so a person can't come and say oh no no this person has some tamir with him because he didn't mention well what about the mubtada what about the time that you have to be harsh and so on and so forth ma'am he didn't mention that right he didn't mention that because he wasn't speaking about that he was talking about the default so if a person is speaking about the default then accept that that is what it is and leave it to the subject in which they are speaking about in order for you to know their opinion about the exception or whether there even exists an exception then that has to be investigated but to take his speech about the default and then try to apply it and say that then subsequently 
they believe that there is never an exception, then this will not be to do to justice. So to pull out one phrase and then try to say, oh, this person is Mumayyir because look, they're speaking about being gentle when giving advice, but what about, and then they start to mention all of these exceptions. They were talking about the default, not the exception, but you want to highlight the exception as if the exception is the general rule, okay? And you will find this is the way of the people of Gulu, the people who are extreme, the people who have with them extremism, they focus in on the exception and treat the exception as if it is the general rule. The general rule in giving advice is gentleness. The exception is to be harsh. These individuals flip it to now the general rule is to be harsh in giving advice. And I guess gentleness is only used in the hizb amongst themselves. That's it. But anyone else is harshness. Harsh, harsh, harsh. But this is not the case. And the proofs and the evidences from the text of the Quran and the Sunnah, they make this abundantly clear. That the origin when giving advice is to what? is to be gentle, that is the origin, except in those cases that necessitate a moving away from the default to the exception, wherein an individual will use and apply harshness. Inshallah Ta'ala, that makes sense? Okay, so the general rule, al-asl, al-rifq, fil nasiha mutlaqa, that the default in giving advice is to apply gentleness across the board. Illa, except when there is something which necessitates the utilization of harshness, then we are harsh. Naam. For Hunaka, Yuhmalu Kulu Ambrin Ala Mayakatawihi. So, with this, it's important to understand that we approach and that every affair will be taken on its merit and that which it necessitates. So we look at the affair based on what it is. Naam. So in, in other words, you have to be able to analyze a particular issue or a particular individual and, and to, um, to see what will be most appropriate in this situation. If the situation necessitates a moving away from the default to utilizing harshness because this is what is most beneficial in this particular issue, then you use harshness. So the ulama, they mention that the utilization of gentleness is appropriate in those affairs where gentleness is that which is going to benefit. And the utilization of harshness is appropriate in those affairs where harshness benefits. So you have situations like this. You have situations where if you are gentle, you will not benefit. And you have other situations where if you are harsh, you will not benefit. So it all goes back to the merits of that particular affair, that particular incident, or, or whoever that particular person is. And based upon an analysis of that individual, specific individual or specific affair, then you will utilize that which is most appropriate. Naam. But the origin is that what? Is that you start with gentleness. When you see that gentleness is not going to work, okay, then you go to the, the de then you go to, excuse me, to the, the exception. Naam. That makes sense? So every affair has to be judged upon its merit, has to be looked at upon its merit. Because to put gentleness in the place of shiddah, that's not from hikmah. Why? Because hikmah is to put everything in its proper place. So what a rifq fi mahil al shiddah laysa min al hikmah. So to put rifq in the place, to put gentleness in the place of harshness, this is not from wisdom and vice versa to put harshness in the place of gentleness this is not from wisdom what is wisdom is that you put rifq in the place of rifq and you put harshness in the place of harshness you put gentleness in the place of gentleness and you put harshness in the place of harshness this is wisdom so we have to be able to identify understand the both of them however I'm, i must stress again we have to get away from this understanding when we believe that being harsh is the origin Naam, we have to get away from this understanding where we believe being harsh is the origin. And a person will come and say, well, what about, what about, um, you know, the mubtadi? 
the Mubtadir, we should be harsh and rough with the innovator, right? If you say, what about the Mubtadir? Then we will ask you, what about Fir'aun? Who was more arrogant? Who was more oppressive? Who was more evil? The Mubtadir or Fir'aun? Keep in mind, before you be quick to answer the individual of low understanding of knowledge, keep in mind that the Mubtadir is a Muslim. The Mubtadir is still Muslim. Whereas Fir'aun was a kafir. Okay? So now I ask you again. You say, what about the Mubtadir? Then I ask you, well, what about Fir'aun? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Musa and Harun alayhum salatu wassalam to go to Fir'aun with a gentle statement. To utilize what? To utilize gentleness with Fir'aun. This is how they began with him. Gentleness. Naam. So likewise... What about the Mubtadir? The origin is gentleness. You only use harshness when gentleness is not appropriate. But the origin is gentleness. You only use harshness when gentleness, you, you realize you know from this particular individual, this specific case is not going to benefit. So then you use what? Harshness. Okay, that makes sense? All right, so I want to get this clear because, listen, fighting against the individuals of harshness, then we have to fight against this across the board. And we have to adjust and we have to pivot because there were all of us at a time we were harsh. All of us at a time due to enthusiasm, due to you know, a lack of knowledge and uh, so on and so forth. We all found ourselves at one point of our lives when we were harsh. Now, all of us in one way or another in one incident or another, in one situation or another, now, because we come up short and we all make mistakes. But the point is, is that we have to pivot and we have to be able to adjust and we have to allow ourselves, because this is what it means to be what Sunni Salafi, to what? So that our actions, they are governed by the text. So if we were incorrect, then we were incorrect, then we state that we were incorrect and that was wrong and that we have to, we have to rectify, make tawbah and adjust. Now we just we don't we don't double down because of no, but we adjust. So the origin again. Let me go back and let me let me reiterate. The default is gentleness when giving advice. So the sheikh he mentions he says well, al He said and except for this, then the origin is rifq, meaning except outside of those situations that are the exceptions to the rule um, that require that require harshness. Outside of those incidents and those situations, then the origin is to be gentle. For the Sahihain, meaning inside of Al Bukhari and Muslim, and Al Yahud, that a group of Jews, Atta wa Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, faqalu asamu alayk, that a group of Jews, they came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said, Death unto you. They said, Asamu alayk. يعني الموت عليك meaning that death be upon you ولكنهم ينطقون الكلمة قريبة من لف السلام نعم so they they said except that these individuals they expressed they articulated they pronounced the word السلام to sound just like السلام you know, they're playing word games, right? They're playing these semantical games. So so they were saying, As-Samu, which means a death, Alik, and they, and they try to make it sound like it was, they were saying, As-Salamu, Naam? Because the, the two are not that far off in their articulations. Likewise, in the way in which that they are they are spelt. There's, the only difference is that As-Salam has a lamb, and As-Sam, there's no lamb. Naam. So they try to play these games, trying to act like they can trick the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he heard them very well. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said unto them, وَعَلَيْكُمْ And you too. Naam. And you too. So now they're both making dua. But we know whose dua is going to be accepted. Okay. فَقَالَتْ أُمُّنَا أَعِشَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى عِنْهَا So our mother Aisha. Because she heard what they said. 
and that they were trying to be slick and play these games. So she replied unto them, Assalamu alaykum wa la'anakumullah wa ghadiba alaykum. She said, no, may the death be upon you all and may Allah curse you all and may Allah be angry with all of you. Now, so she, she replied and she escalated it and took it up because of them trying to be so disrespectful to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and her vigor to support the truth and be supportive of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She said these words and everything she said uh, uh, yani, was true, was true. She didn't say anything that was that was uh, a lie. Everything she said and she and she asked Allah Ta'ala yani, to put upon them was true and they deserved it. So I want you to keep that in mind. Inshallah Ta'ala will come back and mention that again. So our mother Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha Sami'at hum Yaqulun li nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Assamu alaykum So our mother Aisha she heard them saying To the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam May death be upon you Wa yad'una alayhi bil mawt And they were making dua That they were making dua That Allah ta'ala caused the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam To die Subhanallah Wa yadu billah Faqala So she said in reply, in, in reply No no Assalamu alaykum. No, death upon you all. Yani, a dua kum alaykum. May your dua be upon you. Naam, may your dua be upon you. But then she went on and she added, Wa la'ana kumullah. And may Allah Ta'ala curse you all. Wa ghadiba alaykum. May Allah Ta'ala, yani, be angry with all of you. Wa hum yastahiquna hadha. The Shaykh he mentions, he said, and they deserve that. They are worthy of that. They are worthy of Allah Ta'ala's curse and Allah Ta'ala's anger. They are worthy of that. They are Yahud, Maqdub Ali. Naam. They are those whom Allah Ta'ala He is angry with. Fakala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Mahlan ya Aisha. He said, Be easy. O Aisha, be easy. Aniki bi rifq. It is upon you to be gentle. Right? Meaning that what showing her this situation, it doesn't reply, it doesn't necessitate harshness. This situation does not necessitate harshness, even with their verbal abuse, even with their disrespect, even with their playing games and you know, potentially trying to toy with us and belittle our intelligence as if we're not going to be able to hear the difference between assamu and assalamu. Be gentle. It doesn't require any type of harshness. Wa iyaki, wal unf, wal fuhsh. And beware of being abrasive and foul. Beware of being abrasive and foul in speech. Now, and this is just a general warning. Not to say that anything she said was foul in speech because it wasn't. Because they were worthy of that. Now, for Qalit, so our mother Aisha, she said to gain more understanding. Awalam tasma ma qalu. Didn't you hear what they said? Thinking that the Prophet Sallallahu perhaps he didn't clearly hear what they what they said. She said, didn't you hear what they said? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in responding to her while affirming her, yes, I heard what they said, but that's not the point. We're not talking about what they said. No? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said unto her, أَوَلَمْ تَسْمَعِي مَا قُلْ didn't you hear what I said? I'm not telling you what they said, but didn't you hear about what I said in response to them? Rodatu alayhim. I responded unto them. I responded, I responded unto them. And that was with his state with his statement. Wa alaykum. Ma'am. I responded unto them. For you stajabu li fi him. Wallah you stajabu lahum fiya. I respond, they made dua against me. I made dua against them. And my dua against them is accepted, whereas their dua against me is not accepted. Their dua against me is rejected. So they made dua against me. I made dua against them. Their dua is rejected. My dua is accepted. So didn't you hear what I said? Me, it's 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 enough. I responded. My response was enough. It 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 it, it was into the situation. There was no need for an escalation. There was no need to make you know, to bring anything above that or beyond that. Now, so in that, there's so many lessons that one can take away from it. 
Um, but inshallah ta'ala, we'll leave that perhaps to another time. But there are a lot of fruits, a lot of benefits that are contained in that in, in, in that exchange. So the Sheikh goes on and he mentions, he says, فَرَدَّ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ شَرَّهُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ غَيْرِ عُنْفِ So the Prophet وسلم, he, he repelled their evil upon them without being harsh. Because a lot of times you can, you, can, you can refute someone with a smile, right? You can repel a person's evil in a manner that, that doesn't necessitate any type of harshness. A lot of times it's like that, man. A lot of times it's like that. وَقَالَ لِي عَائِشَ وَقَالَ لِي عَائِشَ رضي الله تعالى عنها so the Prophet وسلم, he said to Aisha at this time, at this, at this, at this, and he, uh, uh, you know, during this type of situation, the Prophet وسلم, he said unto her, It is upon you to be gentle. It's upon you to be gentle. Why? Because in this situation, we were able to repel their evil and refute them gently. So, with that being the case, there's no need for anything but gentleness. Does that make sense? If gentleness will get the job done, then you're gentle. You're not harsh. The only time you become harsh is when what? Is when gentleness cannot get the job done. And the only way to get the job done is by being harsh. Then you are harsh. But as long as you're able to get the job done in a gentle manner... Then you're gentle. You're never harsh. You're not harsh. Is that, is that that make sense? Wait. Well, for riwayah, and in a in in a narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said to our mother Aisha, رضي الله تعالى عنها, إن الله يحب الرفق في الأمر كله. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said to her in a narration that verily Allah He loves. Gentleness in all affairs. Allah, Allah loves gentleness in all affairs. The Shaykh goes on to mention, he says, He said that being upon this guided methodology, then this is from the success in which Allah has granted a slave. And you wafiqahu al rifq fi baytihi. That he gives him the success in being gentle inside of his house. Now I want you to pay attention to this. That being gentle, this is something that is a benefit, is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives to his servants, making them gentle. Now making their default gentle. And, and let me tell you something. When the default is gentle, right, this makes the utilization of harshness even more so powerful. You understand? When the default is gentle, a person is known to be gentle. A person is known for being calm. So now, if they raise their voice or become irate, everyone's going to stop and listen now because now this is outside of character. This is outside their norm. So this must be really serious if it's causing them to raise their voice and to be harsh because typically they respond in a very calm manner. Okay? So I want you to uh, to reflect on that, that when your default is gentleness, this makes the times that you have to be harsh even more effective. Whereas if a person is harsh all the time and, and, and their go to is to be harsh and start yelling from the beginning, their yelling after a while will become ineffective because now it's just, oh, it's, oh here he go yelling again. Oh, here she go yelling again. You know, it becomes their norms. It becomes very easy to dismiss them and not really um, give a lot of thought into actual merit of what they're saying. It's just, ah, here, here they go again. I don't really want to hear it. What, what, is, what, are, what are they yelling about now? What are they going on about with now? now? So I just want you to reflect on that. And it is very unfortunate. And it is and it hurts the dawa where you have individuals Yani, who this has become known from them, and this is how the people respond to them. Oh, what they going about on now today? Oh, who they refuting now? You know, because this is what becomes known for them. Benefit? No. Refutation? Yes. All they know for them, and they refute, they refute, they refute, they refute. What benefit, do you, what value is actually gained from them? People are hard-pressed to find it. Now, where their reputation? Find it. Whereas those are them out. Those students who they are known to give value and benefit to the people, and this is what they are known for, when they stop to refute somebody, 
you stop and pay attention because it's oh subhanallah sheikh's refuting them okay this must be really serious it's more effective right does that make sense inshallah ta'ala i hope that i hope that makes sense now ala kulli hal to have your default as being gentle then this is a gift from allah ta'ala that he bestows upon his slaves where he gives them the success in making uh, gentleness their default uh, in their house naam so amongst their in, in their home wa an yuwafiquhu lil rifq ma'a ikhwanihi fi sunnah and that wa yani fi sunnah wal khair wal haq wal huda and that allah ta'ala makes that slave his default as being gentle with his brothers upon the sunnah meaning his brothers and sisters upon the sunnah and upon good and upon truth and upon guidance what tiba'an the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and following the model of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as utilized yani with those who are following the way of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam la fi bid'ah wa la fi dhalala that night utilizing the gentleness in an inappropriate manner when it comes to bid'ah and when it comes to dhalala na'am because of course as the four mentioned there's sometimes you got to be harsh na'am so if you can repel the bid'ah in a manner utilizing gentleness then we repel the bid'ah utilizing gentleness na'am because that's the first thing we're going to go to that's the that's that's the first yani if we were to say that's the first weapon we're going to use the first weapon that we're going to use is going to be gentleness when we have seen that gentleness is not going to it's not going to work in this situation and that the more appropriate tool the more appropriate weapon is to bring out the big gun then we bring out the harshness then we bring out the harshness now so when we have to be harsh we're harsh and we don't apologize for it because this is what is appropriate when we have to be harsh we're harsh and we don't apologize because this is what is appropriate due to the bid'ah and due to the dalala now but when we could settle it with a 22 then we don't use a bazooka we keep it with the 22 why are you going to waste your missile just use a bullet <laughs> okay for lack of a better term right uh ala kulli hal it is important and it is a must that as ahl sunnah we understand this and we become keen and very wise and skilled in knowing when to use what and that we know what the default is and what the exception is upon clarity باذن الله تعالى الى اللقاء استودعكم الله